Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kyle, this is Stitching and Sound. This is a cross stitch channel. And yes, I'm a guy that cross stitches. Isn't that fun? Um, a little disclaimer here. I, um, I, you know, I swear sometimes. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, you know, if I could only swear the rest of my life, I would be okay with that. So, if vulgar words offend you, um, you, I, I will say I've been toning it down on the swearing, but uh, if that's something you're not for, it's probably not the best place for you. But I'm fun, so stick around for the fun. Just mentally censor me if you need to. All right, we've got two cats in here now. It's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been the hottest of minutes. I'm trying to... I've just been stitching a storm. Uh, I've been working a storm. And we've been having storms, kind of. I mean, we've been having a lot of storms here in the Midwest. A lot of tornado sightings here in Iowa already. Um, none where I've where I'm living. We've had some some good showers, but um, nothing too serious by any means. Um, once again, I didn't take notes because I really wanted to get this knocked out. This is Floyd. This is the new cat. This is my cousin's girlfriend's cat. Okay, we've seen Floyd. Okay, bye Floyd. Okay. Um, so I'm going off the cuff again. Um, let's see. We've got stat. We got a lot of stash. Uh, we got one whip, as y'all know. And <clears throat> I'll just knock out what I've been listening to uh, the past couple of weeks. Um, because then I have something I want to talk about before um, I get to the the me the, the, what I the main thing I want to talk about. Okay, so I have been listening to a lot the last couple of weeks. It's, you know, it's all stuff that is not new to me. Um, so let's go back a couple of weeks. Now, okay. I'm going to preface this by saying I grew up with sisters, so this group was a big part of my life growing up. Uh, listen to the Spice Girls. I'm going to, you know, no shame. I love the Spice Girls. Ginger was my favorite. Spice World is a great album. Spice World is a great movie. I mean, it's a terrible movie, but it's a great movie. So if you if any of y'all want to go down some nostalgia, um, listen listen to the Spice Girls or watch Spice World. It used to be on Netflix. It's not anymore, and I wish it was because that killed many a great night watching Spice World. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, Spice World is my favorite. Of, <sighs> they technically have three albums. But Ginger was not in the third album, so they really, in my eyes, they only have two, because Spice Girls, I think, you've been missing one of them. It's not the Spice Girls. So, some choice songs from the Spice Girls, obviously, Wannabe, Say I'll Be There, um, Who Do You Think You Are from the first album is a really good one, um, Spice Up Your Life, Stop, Come On, Too Much, like, these are... I know I'm throwing, a, especially the women, I have a feeling that 99.5% of the people that watch this channel are female, and around the same age, I assume, so I'm taking y'all back, I'm taking y'all way back. God, they, uh, it's 2019, their first album came out 23 years ago, 22, 23 years ago. 23 years ago. Spice World came out in 98. Spice came out in 96, 95. Something like that. Uh, I just remember... That's one of my first memories I have is listening to the Spice Girls and watching the Spi you know, the wannabe music video with Sporty Spice doing the backflip on that table. Yeah. 
Okay, the next up, totally different, um, Black Sabbath, especially the Dio era. Ronnie James Dio is my favorite singer. Um, yeah, just Heaven and Hell, The Mob Rules, Dehumanizer, those are three just great albums. Uh, so I've been cranking out the Ronnie James Dio era of Black Sabbath. And also Rainbow. Rainbow was um, the band that Dio was in prior to Black Sabbath. And the Rainbow Rising album is just... Stargazer, that's a great song off that I did not get around to creating my Spotify playlist. I should probably do that after this video. Uh. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I'm gassy because I just ate lunch before this and it was, um, I had smokehouse food. So, I had brisket and some cheese curds. So, we're gassing it up today. I'm going to try to keep it, you know, maintained. Sorry, Leticia. Or maybe I won't. We'll find out. And then to go opposite, I was also, I was cranking out Madonna the other day. Her Ray of Light album, probably my favorite of hers. And then also her Confessions on a Dance Floor album. You know, Hung Up, all that stuff. That's a great, those two are just her, probably her best albums, I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, better than Ray, uh, you know, like, like, a, uh, like a Virgin and Like a Prayer. I, yeah. Although True Blue is, you know, really good. That's probably my third favorite Madonna album. Maybe it's my second. Maybe I'll drop Confessions down the third. I'm now having an internal battle with myself. Although you can't have an internal battle with someone else. Because they're not inside you. Unless you were pregnant. And you're like, oh, this... I can't... You know, it just keeps kicking the lining of my uterus. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Um, so, yeah. And then... I think I've mentioned Carole King before, but I'll mention her again. I cranked out the Tapestry album while I was stitching the other day. And I'll tell you what, Tapestry, it's a great album. Just that whole, that whole album. Uh, so that's what I've been listening to in a nutshell. I talk more about the Spice Girls just because, you know what's weird? Okay. The Spice Girls are very much more recent than the other people that I've mentioned, but you know what? I'm more nostalgic about the Spice Girls because it's like, in my mind, the Spice Girls have been around way longer than Black Sabbath and Madonna and Carole King. Cause like, I just, re you know, I recently discovered Carole King maybe three or four years ago. I mean, I've always, always known about Black Sabbath and Madonna, but I never like seriously listened to them until, well, I mean, Middle school is when I started listening to Dio and Black Sabbath. My freshman year of college is when I really started getting into Madonna. And then Carol King, you know, I started really listening to her only a couple of years ago. So it's weird that even though all of those are older than the Spice Girls, I'm more nostalgic for the Spice Girls. Because in my mind, they're, I, they've been in my world way longer than the others. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, now... On to the thing, which I wish I took notes for, just so I wouldn't get all blabbery. If my title says anything, and if I'm allowed to post this in the retreat page, Stitch on, StitchCon is officially less than a month away, and I have briefly mentioned this in one or two other videos, but one thing I want to do at StitchCon, call me crazy, I'm going to set something up and we can do a hashtag called Operation Meet 399. I want to meet everyone. Everyone. Uh, 400 people are going to be there. I'm obviously not counting myself because I already know who I am. Or do I? Something to think about. Um... But the moment I found out that I was going to StitchCon and the realization that 400 people total are going to be there, I want to meet everybody. I want to do the insane thing and talk to everyone at least once. So that's what I'm going to do. 
Um, if you see me, please come talk to me. Because I want to meet everyone. And Anita from the Holly and Anita suggested a couple of videos ago when I first mentioned it to get like an autograph book. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an autograph book because I was originally just going to bring a notebook, which is whatever. But I'm going to get a, like an autograph book and everyone that I talk to have at least, you know, a couple of, you know, exchanges of words with name written down. Um, while I would love to take pictures with everyone, um, I don't know if my phone has that much capacity. So, um, but I, I will definitely, you know, every once in a while take pictures, would want to take pictures with people and post them on Instagram using hashtag Operation Meet 399. And if you take pictures with me and you want to post it on Instagram, use the hashtag Operation 399. Wouldn't that be fun? Meet 399. This sounds like so much fun. Also, it's an attempt for me to control my anxiety with that much people by forcing myself to meet that many people in a room with that many people. Now, I'm not going to want to, I'm not going to be just roaming around all the time, but if you see me sitting working on something and you pass by and you want to say hi, just say hi. And then we'll have, we'll exchange a few words and then you can write your name down and it'll be fun. It'll be really fun. I think so. Anyway, crazy. Yes. Am I crazy? Yeah. So, um, Operation Meet 399, I believe I have talked to Stephanie about this idea. Um, it's just insane enough to be smart. So, um, I think it'll be fun. StitchCon's gonna be great. Anxiety is still, you know, not so much about being there, but getting there with the flying and the, you know... Never flown in a plane before, so I, I'm actually more nervous about going through the check, all the check-in process and stuff. I don't want to be frisked, but if I have to, I guess that's what's going to have to happen. So that, you know, I actually, in my mind, thought about, I thought I was going to talk more about that, but that's basically the gist. Operation Meet 399. I want to meet 399 other people at StitchCon. That's not weird, because that's, you know... And, you know, you know, all these people making retreat videos and they say, oh, I wish I would have been able to talk more or talk with everybody. And it's just like, well, that's my goal. Except instead of this being a retreat with just like 75 people, it's going to be 400. So I'm, I'm titillated about it. So, yeah, that's, that's that. Um... And if you're seeing this video from the StitchCon page, hopefully they'll let me post it on there. And if not, then this is going to be really weird. Um, yeah, just take a good look at my face. Okay, now come find it. At StitchCon. We'll talk. I'll get your autograph. I'll get your John Hancock. And uh, yes, I just I said that just because I want to say Hancock. Um, it, it'll be fun. We'll have a great time. So, that's that. Okay. Um, shoot, there was something I was going to say. Oh, okay. I said last time that I was going to do a video of me answering questions and do a, like a stitch with me answering all these questions. If, if you left a question and I didn't answer it, like in the comments, but you saw I hearted your comment, it's because I'm saving it to answer in the video. Uh, there was only a couple that I answered right away because I felt like more people wanted to know the answer at that time. Um, excuse me. Goodness gracious. I told you I was going to make... <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Um, well, here's why I didn't do that. I am 60 people. Actually, less. I might be 50 people away. <clears throat> excuse me. From 2,000 subscribers. We're getting there. And not only am I close to 2,000 subscribers, but my floss tube anniversary is June 22nd. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a special extra long episode and release it the 22nd of June for not only celebrating one year on floss tube, but also 2,000 subscribers. And I'm planning a giveaway. 
for 2,000 subscribers, and I think people are going to people are going to like it. I think they're gonna like it. So, Amy, don't worry. I have not forgotten about you. I, just, I you know, I'm just really bad at getting things in the mail. So, I'll let you know when I send out garden verses. You know, I've emailed you and all that stuff. Anyway. So yeah, June 20th. So I, th there might be a video between now and June 22nd. I can't guarantee it, but that's my plan. So if you ask me a question and I don't just outright answer it, it might be because I'm saving it for that video. My plan is I'm going to record a stitch with me. I'm just going to have all the comments up on my computer and I'm just going to scroll until I see questions. So, I mean, if there's a question I feel like I need to answer right now, I might answer it. But, uh, but yeah, I read all the comments. I heart all of them, almost all of them anyway so yeah that's exciting stitchcon 2000 subscribers possible finish coming up let's move on to whips you know it you love it i just got it i can't get enough of it i had a page finish on this and unfortunately i'm not going to take it out of the q snap to show because i have my q snap positioned right now it was a pain in the ass to get in, and so I'm not going to struggle with that again. But the Hannah Sanderson 1849 sampler. Not only did I get a page finish last week, but I am, I would say I am 65% done with this page I'm on now. Yes. I love this nice motif here this 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 like i thought it was a trophy <laughs> but then i realized i was stitching so it's uh anyway this thing is cool i thought it was a funky face when i was first stitching it and then i realized i was seeing it in a lot of other samplers so this is like a common motif in samplers which is really cool. I'm not a big fan of this one. Like, even though there's four colors going on in this one, it's just not as exciting. This one, this motif reminds me of cotton candy, and that bothers me because I'm not a big cotton candy person. But, and now I'm, I'm right before I started filming, I was partway through this corner motif, which I really like the corner motifs. Um, that's all the same, but they're really fun. I, I've learned a lot stitching Hannah. Oh, and if you want to see my page finish, um, head over to my Instagram. It's linked down below and it's just my name. So it's not stitching in sound. It's Kyle, insert my last name here. And, um, yeah, go find me. Okay. I've learned a lot about Hannah, I feel, stitching this sampler. She was very ambitious. Holy cow. Um, there, Because there's a lot going on. I mean, when you look at the picture of the sampler, I mean, the whole top third of it is nothing but words. And it's just like, whoa. She was shooting for the stars. But... And just all the vibrant colors. I mean, I want to know how long it actually took her. I mean, there's no way to know how long it actually took her to stitch this. But, oh my heavens. I'm chugging along. We're on We're on, on track for getting the finish by StitchCon. Because I would love to have this at the brag table. And once again, I don't, I, I've mentioned this in my videos before. But you see how the border changes colors. Um, so I guess it was, com it, it was obviously common for, um, the girls that stitched these samplers to just use whatever they had. And, um, in the book from Dutch Treat Designs on this sampler, um, it's just assumed that Hannah ran out at some point of this dark green color. And had to use the closest possible thread that she had to continue it. Um, excuse me. There is an option in the booklet that is based off the version that was published in the Needleworker magazine. 
which the border is all one color. It's more symmetrical as far as, because like with the butterfly up here, you see how these branches are different colors. Um, they would be the same in the Needleworker version, just to give it more of a symmetry. So if you if you like symmetry and all that stuff and things to be nice and uniform, uh, that version would be the best one. But I wanted to stay as true to the actual sampler as I could, so I used the. I it's I really have a problem with how it's worded in the booklet. So I'm just using the version that's closest to the reproduction or the the, the original sampler because I want it to be the original sampler. All right. That was a mouthful. Much like the brisket sandwich I had earlier today. Um, it was really good. But everything is gurgling now and I don't... Mm, might be a bad time later. We'll find out. Okay. On to stash. Which I have a lot of. Um... So, buckle up. So, a while ago, I would say a month or two ago, I posted on Stitch Mania. That, okay, even before I did that. So, my best friend takes photos for a real estate agency. And she was in one house, and she sent me pictures of this person's cross stitching on their walls. The person she was taking fit, the person's house she was taking pictures of, was a cross stitcher. And I'll be damned if one of them that she sent me, I needed to know what it is. So I went to the hive mind. Pun intended when you find out what it is. Went to the hive mind and asked, hey, what is this? I need to know because I want it. And they're like, oh, that's a cross-stitch and country crafts design. Oh, you can find it in this book, which is like $80. And I'm like, mm, no. Um, but it was also released in the mag a magazine and as a leaflet. And I'll be damned if I wasn't on Stash on Load one day and I found it. This is Gathering Honey. And I feel really bad because a couple of days after I bought it off of Stash on Load, McKenna from 1884 Stitchery. Now, you know McKenna. You know her, you love her. If you don't know her and don't love her, get to know her, get to love her. Because she's not going anywhere and I don't want her to. We don't want her to. McKenna sticking around. Anyway, um, this is Gathering Honey. I mean, just look at this beautiful sampler. I don't know when I'm ever going to do this, but I love it. It's all color. Look at the bees. Look at how fun this is. What does that say? Sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Proverbs 1624. Would you just look at it? Oh, wait, there was more to it. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Sweetness to the soul and health to the body. Okay, there we go. So isn't that fun? Uh, what? I'll get to it one of these days. Oh, there was a hair on it. There was a sticker there at one point. But, yeah. Ooh, that's all sorts of fun right there. We're gonna get to some fun. Let me just tell you. Okay. Next up on Stash, we got two Mirabilias. One, th okay, this was all from Stash Unload, I believe. Not Stash Unloading, I refuse to ever try to get back into that group. You know, Stash Unload seems to be the only actual unload group that doesn't have drama in it. Just, you know, because you can actually like, you can like posts in Stash Unload and not be reprimanded for it. Apparently, you can't like posts in another one of these unload groups. It might be the one I was kicked out of, because it just clogs up the notifications. We've got Winter Queen from Mirabilia. This is designed... Ooh, this one doesn't even say. I believe this is 20... Oh, that's weird. I've never seen it not say which design it is. I believe it's... Uh... Oh, got a sticker that says... Design number 22. I was going to say 24, but... 
Did I say Winter Queen or Summer Queen? I meant Summer Queen. This is Summer Queen. Um, which means I now have all four of the seasonal queens. So that's pretty exciting. This one is not out of print. So don't ask me why this is the last one I'm just now getting. I actually got the out of print ones first. Uh, spring and Autumn. So that's fun. I... Her dress doesn't necessarily say winter to me, or says winter. It doesn't necessarily say summer. Maybe a conversion? I don't know. I don't like doing conversions for Mirabilia. Um, don't listen to me. So there's that. And then I got this one, which I consider to be the companion to the Sleeping Beauty design. Sleeping Princess, Mirabilia design number 123. I, I love it. I helped one of my viewers stitch the skin one over one um, because her skin, some of her skin is blended threads. Um, and I gave her my best advice. If this will like focus today, that'd be great. Um, so one of these days when I ever get around to a Mirabilia that has blended skin tones, I will definitely do a... Um, a video on doing that because I believe it's important. Okay, next up. Now this one, I... Once you see it, you'll see why it tickles my fancy. This is the Sarah Wilson 1837 English Sampler from the Scarlet Letter. I don't know if this is out of print. I'm not up on the Scarlet Letter, but I saw this sampler and I'm like, please, like, get inside me. Uh, get inside my stash, I mean. Um... You can see why I like it. It's got the fun border. Um, you got a verse going on, which I have to assume is religious, even though I'm not. We'll figure that out at some point. Um, yeah, and I love that a lot of the Scarlet Letter reproduction samplers give you this nice story. Um, one thing they noted was the two figures in here. Like, it wasn't uncommon for um, there to be, you know, figures in, re in samplers. But the thing that they noted was that, you know, even though they're working class, you know, um, figures, um, they... <sighs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. We have seen at least two other 19th century English samplers portraying similar human figures. Okay, let's see. I'm going to just read it. This singular sampler contains so many of the motifs and designs that one has always associated with traditional schoolgirl needlework. From the fairly typical, but quite elaborate, four-sided carnation and rose border, to the pious verse, and oddly outs... Wait, no. And oddly outs outsized figures and animals in the lower scene. Okay. What is most curious about it are the two roughly dressed female figures towering over the house and trees in the lower scene, brandishing brooms. We have seen at least two other 19th century English samplers portraying similar human figures, and on one example, formerly in the collection of the Scarlet Letter, the figures' mouths issued, issued minutely stitched words looking rather like bubbles from a comic book character's mouth, saying, buy a broom. That's exciting. These are obviously working-class women, peddlers, wearing coarse jackets, heavy stockings, thick skirts, and rough caps covering their hair. But why do they appear on such an elaborate and finely worked sampler, the product of an upper-middle-class la young lady's education? It's another one of those needlework mysteries that needs further research. Stitches use... Okay, that's the end of the story. So isn't that fun? It's beautiful. That is the Sarah Wilson 1837 sampler. Scarlet Letter. Alright, now next up, I... This is out of print because the person designing no longer designs anymore. This is from samplers and such. And she was, I believe this was on the Samplers Through Time page, which is a great page if you want to get enabled to finding samplers you can't find anymore. 
Um, this is the IRK1812 sampler, and sh the designer herself, Rebecca Dory, from Samplers and Such, was the one selling these. And this is what it looks like. If it'll focus. Can it focus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can sort of see it. I mean, it's... But I don't know why. I think I got it for the bird, to be honest with you. And then that house. I mean, it seems like it would be a quick stitch, even though it's, you know, kind of big. Um, oh, if you do it on 40 count, it'll be 23 inches by 8 inches. That's exciting. So, yeah. I'm like, okay, it's out of print. I'll get it, because I need to be full of out of print stuff. Okie doke. Next up, eBay. Um, I've had this kit on my watch list for a while, and the listing was going to end, and I was worried I wasn't going to get it. So, I got Angel of Cross Stitch by Joan a Elliott. Look how fun that one is. I don't know when I'm ever going to stitch that, but... One, it's a Joan Elliott. Two, it's Angels. Three, it's Cross Stitch. Three things that just... Get me going. Um, it, I wonder what she's stitching. It's got to be a sampler. Oh, and there's a little bird on top of her little stand there. Oh, and she's got a little teddy bear holding a hoop. I did not notice any of this stuff when I was looking at it for three hours the other day. That is so cool. And she's got a sampler on the back wall. And now I noticed that because obviously... That's so fun! I don't know when I'll ever do that one, but I wanted it, because angels. Um, yeah. That's fun. Okay. Next is Stash that I got from McKenna from 1884 Citri, Stitching in Sequins. You know her, you love her. If you don't know her, don't know her. Get to know her, get to love her, because she's not going anywhere, and I hope she never does. Okay. She was doing a live sale from the attic, and I had to get this stuff. So, with you, I don't know why I got this one, to be honest with you. This one is With You from La Di Da. And the Lord said to Moses, I am with you. Well, that's comforting. I don't know why I got this one. Because I, I usually would not. I think it's because this was half off. And because the moose. That's exciting. So maybe instead of, and the Lord said to Moses, I'll just say, and the Lord said to Moose, I am with you. Because, you know, the, the Moose needs to know. This is what, if you're new here, I am always this weird. Okay. Next up, another Lottie da the Blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift us, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. There's a lot of these in there, and I don't know how I feel about that. But that one's all sorts of fun. Look at how fun that one is. Um, yeah. I think I got it for the tree, to be honest with you. Not that I'm a tree person, but that one just looks fun. And that's got all sorts of words in it. Once again, I am the most religious, non-religious person you'll ever meet. Because I need all of the angels and baby Jesus. And then finally, because this one was half off, and because this is a Jardin Privé, <laughs> Insert the title in French here. It's, it's a Jordan Privé. I don't know what that means. But look at just how big it is, I guess. There's a lot of needlework stuff going on there. We've got hoops. We've got scissors. We've got baskets. We've got a key. We've got bobbinated floss on there. We've got peacocks. Letitia, did you grab this when she was offering it? A peacock right there. Everything's in French, though. Uh, and, you know, I don't know how to read French. 
So if you know how to read French, take a good look and tell me what some of this stuff says. Although, I have a feeling it's all blurry. Um, yeah. It's all in French. So there's that. All right, y'all. I was contacted. I'm just going to preface by saying, you know, I'm not the biggest, you know, I'm obviously a Nora Corbett fan because have you seen all my Mirabilia's? But, I, you know, I'm just not a, the, a big fan of the smaller ones. You gotta, there's got to be a great design for those smaller ones. Because, like, I'm, the witches and the pixies, it's like, okay, whatever. Um, obviously, I'm into the poison pixies because those are the badass-looking ones. The white trumpet one, I need, still need to get that white trumpet, um, Nora Corbett, because that, be, that one almost looks like an angel. So, you know, I'm all about the angels. But anyway... I get contacted by, is she a viewer? She might just be aware that I'm really into mirrors. You know who you are. I didn't ask if I could say your name, but anyway. There are four out of print uh, Nora Corbett's. Tiger Lily, Violet, which I had in my stash, but I gave it to Harriet, Stitch by Stitch Recovery. Had to gift it to her. It was her unicorn. How could I not? Emerald Dragonfly and Silver Dragonfly. Well, now I have three in my stash because this person contacted me saying, Hey, do you want this? It's not in your stash. Uh, you know, I'm not going to charge you out of print prices for it. And no, it's not Tiger Lily. I'm after that one, though. I'm not going to pay $250 like people on eBay are asking for. Because that's very stupid. Okay. But anyway. This is the Silver Dragonfly, Nora Corbett 102, out of print. I don't know how long it's been out of print, but um, had to get it. And she offered it. I'm like, yes. And you know me with out of prints. I now need all the out of prints. So I'm on the hunt for the other three. Um, Tiger Lil is going to be a bitch to find. I know it is. I'll get it one day. You know I will. Um, I want to say that this would be a quick stitch, but looks are deceiving, aren't they? Not a whole lot going on as far as like floss and stuff. A lot of Krynek. Because this thing's got sparkle to it. This design is basically all Krynek with just some, you know, a spackle of DMC here and there. Ooh, and some Whisper. A couple of beads, a couple of treasures. Silver Dragonfly, Nora Corbett, out of print. On the hunt for the other three. Okay, now, people. Y'all know I'm... I, you follow me on the Instagram. I have just become incredibly obsessed with Teresa Wensler, lady. <laughs> I meant to say lately, but it came out as lady, and the sentence still made sense. With that Ter Teresa Wensler, Wensler lady, I... Uh, I just, you know, every day that I'm not doing stitching, I'm looking at Teresa Wensler stuff, and I want it all now. Yes, I'm going to start collecting her. Will I stitch them all? No. Because have you seen all the blends? Um... So I got lucky one day, because, you know, there's a lot of booklets of hers that are, I mean, everything she has is out of print, but there's, like, the best of collections, and one of them that I found, because I'm pretty sure this person was not aware how sought after a lot of this stuff is, because I got this, not only did I get it for incredibly cheap, I got it for however much this person paid for it when it first came out. This is the best of Teresa Wensler Christmas collection. 96 pages of pure Christmas and pure blended threads. Are you ready? Look at this one. This is um, the Angel Procession. And you know I'm going to be stitching this at some point in the future. Once 2058 comes around, 
You, uh, you just wait. I'm gonna have a dent in this, in this one. Um, let's see what. Do, let's see at the designs we got in here. Now, one of them I already have, and that's Father Winter. So I won't show you that one. I've shown Father Winter on here as a kit, signed by Teresa Westler. Isn't that fun? So here's the Angel Procession. Look how fun that one is. Okay, glare. Okay, there we go. Ga no, I like this one, Gabriel. Cause we got dude angels coming in, coming in for the, for the win. Nati nativity. Now this is one I'm definitely going to be stitching because baby Jesus is in it and I need all of the baby Jesus. Look at the, the borders on these things are just insane. Angel of Frost. Now this one is cool. I was re uh, you know, there's an interest. She's got interesting stories of each design on the, on the side, and she's like, she, she said she didn't like using red because it it draws away from the design if you use too powerful or too solid of reds. But you know, she made an exception for this one because it's just. Uh. And this one's cute. Uh, this one's called Companions. She didn't want to use, according to the story on the side, she didn't want to use like a traditional looking Santa for one of her designs. So there's a nice homey Santa with a, a horse. I don't know. It should be a reindeer. Maybe I can figure out how to put antlers on it. But look at how cute that is. And what's cool about that one is the chart for it and the Father Winter chart are all hand drawn. I'm a sucker for hand-drawn charts. I don't know why. Father Winter, if you want to see that, go back to one of my other videos. Um, the Byzantine ornaments. Now, these are cool. I don't know. They'll probably take a while because I'm pretty sure those are all blended too. But Oh, and a Christmas wreath. That's a fun one. Look how fun that is. I won't stitch that because that's not my thing. Now, this one, out of all the carousel horses, I'm drawn to everything winter. So the winter uh, carousel horse, yes. And what, okay, with horse, with carousel horses, um, they've got like categories of the type of carousel horses. And this one is called a stander because it's got three of its legs on the ground. All the shit that I learned reading this thing, good Lord. We got winter fairy in there. I really hope my phone doesn't run out of storage and or memory. And then I think there's one more. Nope, that was it. That's the last one. So yeah, 96 pages of just full on blends. All right. Now this next one. Uh, I saw this, I think I got it on eBay. I don't remember where I get my stuff anymore. I saw it, I'm like, Yes, I need to have it. And this was up for debate on if this one or my Chatelaine was what I was going to do as my new start for um, once I finish Hannah, do a celebratory new start. This is the Fantasy Triptych. And Miss Oh So Crafty is actually doing this one. Um, can you just look at it for a minute? I mean... The amount, I mean, just all the evens that aren't happening right now because the amount of can't is just too extreme. I just, and you want to talk, you want to talk about now I thought I was going on a good run of, you know, each Teresa Winsor I got was less and less blends. Oh no. No, 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 no. I that is all the thread. Okay. I mean... I, the amount of people that actually, you know, sent me messages on Instagram because they could not believe that thread list, floss list, whatever. It's a lot to take in. It's... Yeah. And all of that is blends. Not all of it, but a lot of it. 85% is blends. I was, I was talking with Michelle Bendy Stitchy, and I'm just like, how, how does one design using blended threads? Because it's just like, you know, you've got, you know, a light green and a medium green. 
you know, you don't need to blend a light and a dark green to get that medium green color, but sure enough, there's... I mean, there's a lot of blendeds between light and mediums, but why would you want just a little bit of that? I don't know. Teresa Wensler, where are you? Let's have a chat. If somebody could get me in touch with Teresa Wensler, I have a whole bunch of questions I want to ask. Because, just because the, the evens that I can't anymore. Okay, one last thing. And then we'll be done. See, you come here for the stash. I might as well just change my channel name to Stash Acquisitions, because there's always stash. So as I said, the Fantasy Triptych was up against my Chatelaine for what my potential new start was going to be. Well, one night I'm just on eBay, as you do, um, looking at Teresa Wentzler stuff. And I saw one called The Fortunate Traveler. The moment I set eyes on it, the moment I just looked at it, I needed it. I knew that if I were to be able to get that in my possession between the day I saw it and the day that I will finish Hannah, that hands down was going to be my new start, my celebratory new start. And, you know, I was sent links on how to find it or where to find it. And I'm just like, I don't. Then I got contacted by somebody. I said, hey, I've got this in my stash. Do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, I want it. This is The Fortunate Traveler by Teresa Wensler. I, everything about it. I needed it then. I needed it years ago before I even started stitching. This tickles all of my fancies that are non-religious. We got a dragon. We've got a knight. We got a fantasy story. We've got the awesome border. We got this dragon thing down here going on. I mean, I just, you know, I've been reading been getting back into reading again and i'm reading a giant fantasy book fantasy i don't know if i want to call it my favorite genre to read but i love fantasy i plan on reading the wheel of time series which is gigantic i mean just everything that i think that's why i like Teresa wensler designs they're a lot they're heavily fantasy oriented and I would like to get her best of fantasy collection, but the, not only is part one hard to find, I guess part two is a bitch to find because that one goes higher than the part one does. Good Lord. But this one, as far as I know, is not in either of them. And so I'm really happy to find this to the person that gave this to me. You know who you are. You know I love you and you will be repaid and you know how you're going to be repaid. So, once I get started, the plan is, once I finish Hannah, depending on how soon it is before StitchCon, I want to do a tutorial on beginning a Teresa Wensler design. What to do, because this is, I, I've been thinking about this constantly, and even though I have not started one ever, I haven't, you know, I've been thinking about it so much that I know exactly how I'm going to go about doing this. I'm going to record, you know, and I know people have asked me to do a Mirabilia, you know, video, which I will do in the future, I mean, because obviously, um, but there's just no mirrors that I'm going to be starting between now and next year, and I'm going to go, you know, because I've never started a Teresa Winsor, to be able to do a tutorial on starting one, you know, I'm also kind of not going to know what the hell I'm doing. So I'm just going to have the attitude of, I'm just happy to be here. So I uh, look for that in the next month or two. Um, that's my stash. That's my whip. That's my Operation Meet 399. That's my music. I am Kyle. This is the end of the video. I love you all dearly. Um, so, 
I haven't talked about joy in a while. And, you know, my, besides Jan herself, one of my favorite parts, and I've said this many a time, one of my favorite parts of her videos is right at the end of her videos when she says, find your joy. And, you know, I try my best to find my joy every single day because if you, you know, I complain about my job a lot. Hopefully that'll change. Um, but, you know, I take solace in having that little reminder at the end of the video to look around and think about the things that bring you, bring you joy, bring me joy, bring all of us joy. And so I'm going to leave today borrowing Jan Hicks's, as I have before, her phrase of find your joy. You know, are you having a down day? What is your joy today? What, 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 you might be sad watching this video, but I want you to think about what are the things that make you happy? What brings you joy? What, what are things you look forward to? Um, so as I've done in a video before, I want everyone to put in, you know, not, well, if you don't want to, it's fine, but tell me down below, what, what are some things that bring you joy? Because that will bring me joy, is having y'all tell me what brings you joy. And, you know, I've had some new view, a lot of new subscribers since that video, so I would love to, and people don't usually comment on older videos usually, so if you had seen that last video, what brings you joy, and, you know, you just didn't comment, I want you to comment now. What brings everyone joy? What makes you happy? Because I want everyone to be a lot of us aren't happy sometimes. A lot of us appear to be happy when we're really not. And that's something, you know, you know, those, those, in, those introverts that are extra extroverts. I feel like introverted extroverts are the ones that always appear happy, but you know, it's just a face because they're, you know, they're, they're doing, they're dealing with their own stuff. I consider myself an introverted extrovert. Um, so yeah, find your joy. What brings me joy? Well, all of you do. Knowing that I've reached almost 2,000 subscribers in a year, did not think that was going to happen. I, and honestly, I seem to get more subscribers when I'm when I when there's longer periods of time between videos. It's it's interesting to me, and I love that people are discovering me. I love getting messages saying, hey, I just discovered you, and this is why I think you're hilarious. And I'm like, that's awesome. Welcome. Enjoy the adventure. Join me on this adventure. Let's start an adventure. That was the name of my first video, because I wanted to see where this was going to take me. Was it, was it going to be worth it? I think it's always worth it. Um, you know, I just, I love you all so much. And I can't wait to meet a lot of you at StitchCon. If you're going to the Midwest Cross-Stitch cross Retreat, I'm very excited to meet you all there. Um, I'm very excited who my roommate is. Um, it's going to be fun. StitchCon's going to be great. Pam and stuff, can't wait to meet them. That's what brings me joy, is just getting to meet just everyone. I get to meet Debbie Bernheisel. I get to meet Jen Upton. I get to meet... Um, I get to meet Jan. <laughs> I get to meet Linda and so many others. So that's what brings me joy. I feel like I went around in circles a lot with that, but that's okay. So with that, I want all of you to keep being amazing. Let those fucks fly. Sorry, I had a notification that my battery was low. Better that than low storage. Keep being amazing, let those fucks fly. And just please, if anything, what would bring me joy is if you just say no to acid. Say no to acid. And find your joy. Find that joy. No matter how small the thing is that brings you joy, find it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll come find you and I'll be like, be happy! Okay, no, I'm not going to do that. But Im imagine if I did. I love all of you. Okay, bye.